money calling them for the pick up. We really work and ain't nothing left. Welcome to another episode of the Chopping Up a Visionary. I am here with Papo, big Papo, man. How you doing tonight? I'm good. I'm kind of tired. Just crazy, crazy set. So I would expect that. We're going to make this quick, maybe like 10, 20 minutes. I want to start from the beginning. All right. So in the beginning, you grew up in Washington Heights near Harlem. Then as a teen, you uh, you went away to Elizabeth, New, uh, New Jersey. And that's where you met Papo. No, not Papo. <laughs> that's where you met Subject 5. Sorry. You're drinking a little bit. That's where you met Subject 5. Can you go into how you guys met and how long it was you lived out there before you met him? Uh, I mean, I met him after I finished high school and shit. Fucking, we was just making music around, and I saw his band camp, and we bought a beat off him, me and my mans. We just, like, just put $20 on his band camp, sent them 20 for a beat. Then we started seeing him around because his bio said Elizabeth. I'm like, who is this nigga? Then we just start linking up because he lived right around the corner from me. So we just start linking up and shit. And I want to go back to when you lived in Washington Heights. So when you lived in Washington Heights, famous producer Vinyls was your neighbor. Yeah. Right. Um, he put you onto a lot of music, as I read, right? Something like that. Something like that? It was just all around, this bumping shit. I wouldn't call it put me on, but like, yeah, we were just all like listening to shit at the same time. So. Right. Yeah. Um, did, he, did he have any impact on your current sound or anything like that in Not terms really. of what he put you onto? Not really. Not at all, actually. That's just like somebody I happen to know personally. Gotcha. Not, that doesn't really have nothing to do with music. We just know each other from like the block on some little kid shit. But I would say that like watching him make beats when I was younger made me like be like, yeah, I like this shit. Heard you, heard you. And sorry, I mentioned Subject 5 a couple minutes ago, but um, what was the bond built upon on? Was it built upon on strictly the love for music or did you guys have anything that was like you know you knew i was going to be your homie as soon as you, you first interacted nah i don't know honestly we were just all chilling bro and we were a big group before and cyber would just pull up and i'm just like oh he really does this shit for real like he really liked this shit he really do this music shit. i'm like we gotta go and we just kept making tapes making tapes and now we're here Wait. and and uh in 2017, you dropped Baller of the Century and Hollywood Poe in 2018, yep. both under the alias of um, Pablo Johnson. Yeah. Oh. So what caused the name change? What, what was the decision behind that? I don't even know, honestly. It just happened. That shit was just some growth shit. Like, I was just like figuring out how to type my name on SoundCloud and shit. I'm like, oh shit. Why was I Pablo Johnson? I don't even remember why I was Pablo Johnson at first. Oh, it's some shit my cousin used to call himself Popola Johnson. It's like pussy. Popola means pussy in Spanish. He used to call himself like Pussy Johnson. And I'm like, I'm Pablo Johnson. It's some funny shit. Play on words. I like that. I want to dig into the 2004 Collective. So you have the SmackDown vs. Raw EP, which yeah. was very fire. I dropped that in 2018. Then in 2019, you and Richard 2004 dropped 2004. Yeah. It's produced by Tony, if I'm not. One of them shit's produced by Tony. I think SmackDown vs. Raw is produced by Tony Sanchez. Okay. The whole thing is produced by Tony Sanchez. All right. Um, I want to dig into the collective. So how did the collective start to begin with? And what's the current state of the 2004 collective? Uh, it started, like, just on some school shit. We were just buying polo, buying and selling polo and sneakers and shit. Then that shit got old. We started making music. And then... We were always making music. My boy Macho was always making beats, so we will be freestyling, but he never really took it too serious. And the rest of the crew, always still making music. Richard and Mo, they're not really on their music shit right now, but they still intact. They st we still intact. Where? Will there be any more um, 2004 collective projects uh, in the future? Uh, I don't know. Uh, me and Uwe got a lot of shit on the way. He just live in Milwaukee now. So it's like kind of hard to get up, but me and Uwe have like a few songs on the way, like four or five songs. And now I kind of want to dig into your sound. So your sound is very reminiscent of the early 2000s, kind of like Lloyd Bankish, Prodigy-ish. 
and not even with the vocals, but also with your beat selection. So was that decision to layer your vocals based upon nostalgia for the music you love, or was it based on trying to separate yourself from your competition? The layer shit probably came in just on some like, I didn't even really know how to record. So I would just go in and I'm like, all right, I gotta do doubles. Then I'll just like how it sounds. Some people don't really do doubles. I'm just like, I just like how it sounded. So I'm like, I'm rocking out. It sounds like Tupac. In my head, I think it sounds like Tupac. So I'm like, all right, back. Uh, and then, so being that your, your music, it kind of holds elements of the early 2000s a lot. So oh, yeah. being that it doesn't really cater to today's generation, do you get a lot of millennials, like, you know, older heads that support your music a lot? Uh, I don't know. I'm not going to lie. Uh, I think a lot of, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not going to lie. I think, like, it's more like on some, I don't look at the age. I look at more like what kind of people. Like, there's, like, certain, like, archetypes of people. So it's, like, more like the creative type of people and, like, they could come any age. They'd be like a 40 year old, they'd be like an 18, they'd be like a 13 year old. So it's like more like the people that like different weird shit. I ain't afraid to know my shit is weird, like, it ain't basic. So it's like, it's some weird shit. But, and, you know, on the topic of the early 2000s, what are your top three albums from that era? That 2000s era of rap and hip hop? I don't even know. Hold on. 50 Cent, Get Rich or Die Trying, Cameron, I don't know, something from Cameron, it don't matter what it is, something, oh, Purple Haze, okay, and then, I don't even know, bro, I'm about to say, I know you fuck with Vado, right, yeah, Vado not up there, not really, Nah, I'll keep it to you. Shout out to Votto. But Votto Cameron, that's my favorite Votto tape. That's why I said anything can. But other than that, I'll say. That was like, oh, no. Yeah, right? Boss of all bosses. Yeah. That's that shit. Man. That is that and shit. And um, damn, bro, you got me on the spot. These motherfuckers right here. Bro. Fucking, um, all right. That said, 50 Cent, get rid of Dot Try. Oh, you Kanye West. Which one? Play registration. Okay. Damn, you put that ab uh, above graduation? Yeah, above graduation, yeah, ah, bro. Niggas need to put some respect on Kanye name. I don't even know if the respect is there anymore. <laughs> but, bruh. He went crazy, niggas forgot he was nice. <laughs> yeah, that nigga Kanye is crazy. But, like, it sounds crazy even saying that nowadays. You feel me? Like, mm -hmm. Kanye is crazy. It's like, dog. But, like, niggas be listening to, like, Life of Pablo. I haven't even listened to that shit. Really? I still haven't listened to Life of Father. I believe that's that's one of his uh, most beautiful works of art. For real? Not not anything above like beautiful no, dark twisted fantasy or anything, it's but fire, it's though? it is fire. Out of five stars, I'll give it like a four, three and a half. That's crazy. It's artistically up there. The last joint that I feel like that is Yeezus. I'm like, all right, I'll give that shit. Ah, uh, I put it above Yeezy. Yeezus? Yo, Yeezus? Yes, I put it above Yeezus. He's he's tweaking right now. He's smiling and shit. I put it I put it above. Well, Jesus. you fuck with nah, Jesus, bro. Jesus that's just like that's top three bro. Kanye, bro. My opinion, bro. I'm gonna look at y'all and just agree to disagree. Bro, and I'm not, you, know, you know who else I fuck with? I fuck with Kanye. Currency. Currency's fire and very consistent. South South the currency. Larry Jones. Mm -hmm. Sauce Walker. Um, Joiner Lucas. Lil Russell. Who else I'm thinking about? Master P. What well, all them niggas got in common? Fuck the industry, bro. Okay. I don't know. I swear to God, I never listened to a La Russell song, but I respect his hustle. I don't listen to La Russell, but I respect his hustle. It's a bar. I don't listen to Join the Lucas, but he get to it. I thought he was going to say I respect was, this hustle. I respect the hustle. I'm looking at what niggas doing. They like, yo, you got to get this shit. So I'm like watching. I'm like, yeah, we got to figure out how to get this shit on some independent shit. That's why I mean. I respect that shit. like that. So recently, you were there, but I interviewed Wiki a few weeks ago. Word. I need Yeah, I interviewed Wiki I a few weeks ago. I was there, ago. Right, It was a long day. 
it was a long day. On June 26th, y'all released um, Dodging Losses. Right. Within that interview, though, he revealed to me that y'all got some more shit coming. Yeah, so, is it is it a single? Is it a collab EP? Is it an album? What can you say about that collab before the release? I really, I'm not even sure what to call it, but we have like 10 plus songs. We have mad songs. Like, we just be chilling. I'll be like, yo, get on this shit. Or he'll be like, yo, get on this. So, like, we just got mad music. Like, so it's like, I don't even know. But we're going to figure something out out of it. I might throw something on Mr. 3000. I might throw some over there. Like, yeah. I got a question about that album later. But exactly a month later, July 26th, you held a release party for Mr. 3000. Yeah. So what can you say about that project? Is there a release date yet? Just give us the details. I'm just trying to get some features. I never really be trying to get features and shit. Now I'm just trying to get some features and... I'm, it's basically done, but I'm just trying to, uh, like I said, I'm on some marketing shit right now, so like, I'm trying to map this shit out the right way. I can't, yeah, I'm trying to be a little more serious with it. Right, and um, obviously, maybe, I can't speak for you, but we can expect DJ on the album. Maybe? No? Is he on it? I don't think so, maybe. Me okay. and Lucas, that's another nigga. We got hella work <laughs> on the way. We got hella shit, like, we've been wilding. What can you say in terms of features for Mr. 3000? YL. Outside of outside of DJ. YL. YL. Shout out YL. Um, Wiki. Maybe Lucas. I'm still figuring out the track list, but maybe Lucas. And it's another one I don't want to mention, but it's a good a, another good tune. Got you. And can you tell us the vibe of the album? What can we expect from Papo for this? One? Everything. Everything I've made before, I'm putting it all in one type shit. Like sometimes like if you listen to pop on PDs, it's like a certain sound, and then like we don't miss a certain sound. I'm just doing all everything in one. Okay. Type shit. Cause yeah, I just spin around a few good people, and they're like, "Why don't you just pull that shit on one album?" I'm like, you know what? Let's do it. I never did it, so it's about that time. Right. Mix it up a little bit. Yeah. 2021, your most active year. You dropped five projects. Yeah. You dropped five. Yeah. I think yeah, it was five yeah, albums, right? I think right? we dropped um, Like It or Love It. Yeah, yeah I think that was... Yo! So, music. It's like, nah, it's like, nah. They shooting a the music video, we shooting this stuff. So out of, the, out of the 17 projects that you've dropped in total, what holds the most re uh, replay value for you? What do you believe has the most replay value? It changes all the time, low key. It changes all the time. Like... Some days I'd be like, pop on PEDs. That shit is golden to me. For real, for real. But then sometimes I'd be like, the other day I was chilling with my boy Marcus. Shout out to Devil's Lake. And he has like this crazy CD thing. And he just running like it, I love it. And I'm like, fuck, this shit crazy. So it's like, like it, I love it is it's climbing up to the top a little bit. It's because I was just rap. I love he like my show and I'm just rapping a lot. Right. But, I like making the songs like on some hat to ball type shit. I like those a lot. That's low key my favorite song I ever made. But like, I don't know. I think like it a lover, pop on PDs. Those are my two favorites right now. Word. And uh, I would say about a month ago, I can't put a time stamp on it. But DJ Lucas posted a picture, a couple of pictures of you and TK on the story. Oh shit, so, yeah. So how did that come about? How did you two meet? Obviously, the pictures are real by your reaction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, all right, so Uwe just was on SoundCloud and making music. Uwe was popping. He'd been popping for a minute. And TK was... Oh, wait. Uwe was TK's favorite rapper at one point. And Pimpy. And they just used to fuck with each other. TK was, like, 14. I thought it was weird. I ain't even gonna lie. But we would go out to Texas and, like, we did a show with them. Trilloween, it was, like... Lil Yachty, uh, TK Uno, K Supreme, a whole bunch of niggas. And then they were low key stranded in Austin and we was like jugging this shit and we jugged the Uber back to Dallas. And we like got them niggas back to Dallas. And then it was just cool since, and we, that's when we took that picture on that trip. And yeah, we was just cool. And then bro just started growing up, making music. We already had like uh, Sly Cooper and a few songs. Then we did shows in Jersey. We did a lot. We did a lot with Taker. That's the homie. Word. 
Did you hear any of his um, unreleased music from prison? Mm, I don't really be tapping in because like a lot of shit be like fake. So like unless I hear shit from like the source, like anybody that like really know him, I don't really be paying attention to anything I really see because there'd be a lot of nonsense going on. And shit. I'm not gonna lie with that AI shit. I don't know if that TK song is real neither. Yeah, I mean he had a few songs, but like right now with the band lab and the phones and shit, you never know. And I like I can't even lie and act like I've been talking to them. So it's like you never know, you never know. Right. And um obviously a few weeks ago we got to spend some we got to spend some time at, at, at Young World. It's a very fun fest, uh, festival. But there was a moment that I kind of just kept locked in the chamber. There was a few moments where a few fans popped up to you, had the merch on, very ecstatic about your next drop. How does that kind of feel? How does ah, can't even talk? How does that kind of love feel from local artists and local fans from of yours? Honestly, it feels good because that's what we do this shit for. Some people be trying to act too cool and shit. I'll be like, nigga, you fuck with me? Even if I see niggas with a, a ballerina shirt or some shit, I'm like, nah. I'm like, nah, bro, come here. We gotta talk. I see that shit. Like, you know, like, not getting to acknowledge people. Like, we all humans and shit. So I'm like, bro, I'm for the people. We are the people. Type shit. Like, I don't know. I just fuck with it. I fuck with it heavy. Word. We're reaching towards the end of the interview. We expected to have Papo DJ subject for this. I don't know if they can come over right now. Stop! I got some questions about what I consider the big three. Papo, DJ, subject, the man behind the boards. So how did you three link up and what's it like building such a close knitted uh, bond in and outside of the studio? Oh, I met Papo a few of them. Oh, that's, that's how, all right, all right, back. okay, okay. I was going to take it way back. I was going to take it way, way back. So Lucas, I knew Lucas's brother. I knew Dane off of uh, Twitter and shit. And he used to, like, hit me up. Like, Yo, your beat's crazy. I used to check his shit. You know what I'm saying? And then turned out later on, we had a show in Boston. And we pulled up out there, met him, chopped it up, was chilling. Did the show and the rest is history, low key. And we made a song. Crazy nobody ass song, too. For real, for real. Nobody move, nobody get hurt. What are them we was cooking up right, right, right on deck early, you know. And then rest is history, pretty much. Yeah, no. Lucas was living upstate New York, and it wasn't like, easy to get there. So we went and we made like four or five, 30 designer. We, we made move, that shit like move. in one day. I can't even lie. Westside Gun be like, oh, I'll record this in one day. Like, bro. We really be doing this shit, like, it's, it's nothing, bro. But, like, we put it together, but, like, bro, the music done is nothing. So, like, we we on some organic shit, as stupid as it sounds, but, like, I just be like, yo, just get on this. We don't really be talking about it or, like, making theme songs and none of that shit. We just, like, all right, bro, jump on this shit. Like, it ain't really no, like, no overthought shit. I'm just piggyback off that, literally that. Like, it's just me cooking up. Shit, out here, one of the two, one of these two motherfuckers on, yeah. throw it up, and then that's pretty much it, man. You just keep it going and DJ. keep it flowing. DJ. Hey, we busy, man. Busy, occupied, man. So it's all good. And I want to dig more into the chemistry here. So <laughs> who's the heart and soul of the three of you? The glue and the wild card. <laughs> Damn. And you, I can, you want to do that? What, what is what is the what is what is the 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 wild card mean? The wild card is the nigga that be walling out. That's 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 the one. Nah, nah. You need him around, but at the same time, I'm gonna be like, honest, be bro. I'm gonna keep it on it right now. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> Boom. I'm the heart and soul, bro. Right? I'm the heart and soul. Lucas is the glue, and this nigga is a something. <laughs> He's something. No, bro, no. no, 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 bro. Like, that ass, that ass. I'm the heart and soul. Lucas is the glue. Like, bro. Or it could be vice versa. Whatever, whichever way you want to put it. And he's important, bro. He's, like, mad important. But, bro, me and Lucas. But then subject is, like. So he was walling on the Europe tour. He was walling. <laughs> I don't know who was walling. I ain't even going to lie. Nah, fuck that. We nah, got to do, do any meeny, miny, moe. Nah, Me, him, or Wick, who was really walling? I'm, I'm going to keep it 
keep it a buck. Look. Look. Certain days, right? Depending on what night it is. I gotta give wild card my man right here. Uh he, 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 he Damn, yeah, go ahead. You go got to wild out, bro. I ain't going to lie. I'm a wild out. Especially as a recent, I'm spazzing on everybody. You want to get it in, we could set that up, too. We want to ball, we could ball, too. But you're not going to be playing with me, bro. Like, so that's why I'm like, yeah, I might be the wild card. I'm all three of them. He's all three. We all three the all three. Yeah, we all three the three. Because sometimes subject is the glue. Sometimes... Lucas is the fucking wild card. He's just fucking, what he said, talk my talk. What he said, talk my talk, like have manic episode or some shit like that. <laughs> like, you just never know. You just never know, bro. Yeah, they really do. <laughs> I wish DJ was here to fucking defend himself. But on the topic of that Europe tour, are there any memorable moments or stories that you can share on the platform today? Anything that won't get anybody in trouble? Uh, I don't care. You can say it. No, 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 no. I got, I got a little simple, stupid one. Uh, I was riding around on some bitch's bike. She, she, um, is, 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 is. I don't, I don't want to call her a bitch. Goddamn. This, this lady came to the show, and she, 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 she got to the show on her grandmother's bike, and then we was posting up somewhere, and I was like, yo, let me, let me fuck around with this real quick. And I was riding bikes in the middle where. Copenhagen. I was riding bikes in the middle of the street. Wow, wow. Ooh, 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 ooh. Same time, right? Same episode on the other side of town. My man's right here had a rap battle. Copenhagen. Crazy. Real talk. Crazy rap battle. Crazy. That, that's, that's, I'm gonna just. Somebody got the video to that shit. Somebody got the video to that shit. I, I don't know, crazy. but it was crazy. <laughs> I turned to uh, um, New Jersey twerk <laughs> real quick. <laughs> I turned to Loaded Lux real quick. Yeah. Nah, um, I ain't gonna lie, bro. I smacked like a 55-year-old lady in, in Scotland. Fuck it. Nah, I don't do that. I don't care. That's that's one of them. Nah, nah, nah. How did, why did that happen? Bro, I'm gonna keep it a stack. I really don't care, bro. I really don't care. I'm gonna keep it a stack. So, boom. This how this how it was working out there. I seen this one John. She was like Asian with blonde hair. You know what they say about ABGs with blonde hair. So I'm on it. I'm on it. I swear to God, I'm on it. Boom, I'm on her a whole night. On her. Wiki trying to talk to me. I'm like, bro, please. I'll talk to you tomorrow, nigga. I've been with you for 30 days. Hold up. Subject trying to talk. Subject already knew. You know, I'm just talking. She tell me. She said, oh, we out. I bet. We out. We walk into her apartment. Boom, boom, boom. Glasgow. At, uh, Scotland. We walk to her apartment. Boom, boom, boom. She like, get comfortable. This is, mind you, this is somebody else. And then, whatever. We get hot and heavy. And then, her friends, or all her roommates are storming the house. And they storm in her room. Because they didn't know I was in there with her. And then she's like, oh, you got to leave. You got to leave. I was like, fuck. And, bro, my phone was dead. I didn't know where I was going. And then I walked back to the bar. I found the bar. And I just seen this one John. <laughs> I seen that one John, that 55. She was good 55, though. She was like, subtract 22, nigga. She was 33 looking. And... And we was just, I just seen her, and I was like, she was getting chicken and chips, mate. Chicken and chips. And I was like, what's good? What we doing? Isn't the night still young? You still look young. <laughs> and then, and then um, we went to her crib. And then um, we just listened to David Bowie. And she was telling me how she used to go to David Bowie shows when she was young. <laughs> And then um, I just woke up there and, like, I left my hash in her crib. I was so tight because I think we was going to Dublin the next day. And then, yeah, nah, I linked these niggas up the next morning. Glasgow crazy, a whole bunch of white niggas looking at me like, bro, niggas be getting poked out there. So, like, I'm walk I left her crib, like, at 6, bro. 
The story gets deep. I leave her crib at six, first of all. I need a key to leave her crib. And I leave while she sleep. Like, like a dot. You feel me? Like, like a dot. Literally. I left while she was asleep. And I'm like, how the fuck do I open this door? And nigga, I, I, I just... I opened, I found the key. It's like some fucking Wizard of Oz, fucking Harry Potter key, old looking key. Like a Kingdom Hearts key. <laughs> Nigga, turn that shit, boom. I go downstairs. Now I'm just in a fucking parking lot. And you need a, a clicker to leave. And it's like a rich building. Yeah, she had money, she had money. It's like a rich building. And, bro, I just waited there for like an hour for somebody to leave. And it was a fucking, like a... a like um, one of them S series Audis, the nice joint, a nice joint. They was looking at me like I was trying to steal a car. I'm like a fucking black guy in fucking Scotland and chilling in the parking lot at six in the morning. But yeah, I got out of there and I waited for these niggas to wake up. The day after we got some good ass Pizza Hut. That's all I gotta say. That's who's busting. Wait, wasn't Pizza Hut? It was Domino's. It was Pizza. What is Domino's? Chicken tikka masala pizza. That shit was good as hell. That nah, I'm fire. telling you, it was busting. It was busting. It <laughs> And on the same topic of that European tour, uh, what was the best venue to perform in? What did you get the best reception in from the audience? Poland. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, what's that shit called? I took the walk to Poland? You literally. You took the walk to Poland. You took the walk to Poland. What was that spot called, though? What's the mean? Warsaw. Crazy. That shit, Warsaw, Poland, y'all niggas got it. Um, London's always crazy. Bristol and Brighton and shit. That shit. All them shits are crazy, though. Paris was very crazy, bro, because, you know, them French niggas fuck with me and I fuck with them. Nah, nah, yeah. Edinburgh went crazy, too, but yeah. Where you going? Shit, I'm going back to the crib. Bet, holla at me. I'm going to holla at you. Yes, sir. We about to, we gonna have to get after it. I'm about to say, after we, this. we got one more question. Yeah, yeah, bet. We still gonna do that freestyle too. Bet. Where we going? So for the last question, you DJ subject. In twenty twenty one, y'all dropped Dirty Designer. Last year, y'all dropped Continuous Improvement. Can we expect a third? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, a third uh, tape with y'all three. Ain't no secrets. Yes. Yes. When can we expect that? Um, eventually, after Mr. Three Thousand and Luke is about to drop something part four. I forgot. You ain't even give me no approximate date on Mr. Three Thousand. So when should we expect? End of August, September. End of, end of August, September. Heard you, heard you. End of August, September. It's gonna drop at the end of the summer. Yeah, we gotta fill these. Vibes. You got any words for the people subject on that on that project on that third project? You already know. You got that. You got that. Bro, you got the Chief Keef. It's, it's, the, it's the Chief Keef jacket right here. There you go. You know, hey, man. That's that Back from the Dead 2012. Uh, man. Oh, you got my real name. I don't really, I don't, really, I don't, it's on the way, man. I don't really do a lot of the, it's on the way, gang. It's on the way. That's, that's all you got here for me, bro. And before we go, I was doing research. I think I got your government name. Can we confirm that? Awesome. Let's see. Eric Vasquez. Hey, yo. <laughs> this nigga different. Yeah, nigga. <laughs> Eric Vasquez. Damn. That's me. That's me. That's Papa. Any any parting words for the interview? I, I had to sneak that one in there, but is there any parting words for? Should I do that shit right now? We gonna we gonna record it separately. They gonna see that separately. They gonna see ready. that. I know you're ready. They are gonna see that separately. Is, is there any parting words for uh for for chopping up with Visionary today? Important words is get money and stay motivated and fuck everybody. Fuck everybody. EBK. EBK. Oh, hold up. Shouts to EBK, um, J Bo. Yeah. Shouts to Moneybag Buzz. Out West, man. Shouts to Babyface Ray. Yeah. Shouts to Chicken P. SME Tax Free. Yeah. Shouts to Ooey. Yeah. Shouts to Quill. Shouts to 22 Baby. Shouts to 454, shouts to Mike, shouts to Wiki, shouts to YL, shouts to Starker, shouts to motherfucking, shouts to Monday Night, shouts to motherfucking Navy Blue, shouts to motherfucking Jadacy, shouts to motherfucking Neonte, shouts to everybody, B, if you get in there, get to it. Shout out the gang. Hey, DJ, you got some parting words? You missed the interview. You got some parting words? Yeah. I'm here, man. DJ, DJ, just... 
Regular shit, bro. Bringing everyone out here, having fun. I love everyone and coming out here. Shout out you for coming out. You already know. Bringing the boys out, man. Get out of the fucking the tri-state. Bringing the mass. We're back in town. We motherfuckers only motherfuckers in this. Um, let me talk about shit. Only motherfuckers killing the country bar circuit. But we making that fucking music y'all want to hear. You know You know what I mean? Like, just what's understood don't got to be. You know what I mean? Like, we doing what we do. We going to find the venue. Get it for yourself, man. Get it for yourself. That's what we doing. Get it for yourself, bro. That's what we doing right now. 100%. What's understood don't got to be explained. This is Chopping Up with Visionary. I'm here with Popo, Subject 5, my boy DJ Lucas. Yes, sir. Bow. See y'all next time. Pause, bitch, I'm right, my balls, jaws. Just hit a lazy like Charles off. Please don't ask me what I got on. Dirty designer, we mowing the lawn.